Hello, this is Black White Soul, and this is my review of NXT that aired on the 16th of May. And frankly, started about 20 minutes ago, so let's see if my recording gets all the way through. Shall we? Let's. Okay, opening match is the Ascension versus two guys I've never heard of and don't look like they're a tag team. And they're probably going to end up jobbing here. The crowd 100% behind the Ascension here because they're just stomping away and the crowd are completely with them and there's the Fall of Man don't really like the finisher but that one actually looked quite brutal the guy landed right on his neck as he flipped over but yeah we'll see if they eventually come up and face the Usos they could be good but maybe give them a few more longer matches so we can actually see what they can do please test them out WWE um, then we get some crazy techie music hit and out comes Locals? Locals? Locals. Locals. Um, basically the Lucha team from last week and they challenge, it's Ricardo on the mic challenges the Ascension to something a bit different and they'll get the crowd going Lucha! Lucha! Good, if they've actually got a bit of a storyline to a match maybe it'll actually last a bit longer. Get a nice little interview with Sami Zayn um, another person, I can't wait for him to come up to the roster, I think his in-ring is more than ready for it. Mike Skills, he seems confident, he seems fairly good, confident talker, good baby face. Um, and frankly, considering what happened last week on Raw, WWE needs sort of good faces coming up. And we're back into our Divas Tournament with the lovely little Alexa Bliss. And she is going to be facing Charlotte. And this is going to be a David versus Goliath match. I can't wait to see these two next to each other and just see the size difference. <laughs> Good crowd reaction to this one. They're getting, let's go Charlotte. Alexa, bliss. Um, Good match so far. It looks like one of Alexa Bliss's little signature segments is going to be when she's on the top and person charges in. She does a somersault over them onto her feet and rolls through. Good impressive agility from her. Can't wait to see some more technical moves. And Charlotte Flair is your winner. Sort of how I expect it to go this way around. Um, she's obviously the one they've got a lot of potential on. Of course, you've got the Ric Flair angle to play off. I like her finisher, uh, which has now been named the Bow Down to the Queen. Um... But it's a bit of an awkward into it. They have to be on their knees for her to flip over. So she needs to, I think, start thinking of a specific, particular way to get into it. Because she sort of just scoops lamb and they have to rely on them getting up to their knees at the right angle to use your finish. Um, but no, good solid wrestling from both of these two divas. They're going to be good in the future. And Charlotte is going to have a nice spot. I, it's got to be her versus the boss, Sasha Banks. I think these two are going to have to have the match at uh, NXT TakeOver. And I expect great things from them. And now we're getting Mojo Riley versus Aiden English. Uh, because of a little altercation they had last week. Um, so maybe we'll see a decent match out of Mojo. Not holding up my hopes. And we'll see how good Aiden English is and see if he can carry Mojo into a decent match. <sighs> Mojo wins. Um, better showing from him, but again, I just don't see anything in him. He's big and athletic, but there's no depth there. Aiden English has got a good gimmick. He sort of, all his moves are relatable to his character. It's a sly heel. Uh, we can get a lot more potential out of that. And I hate, hate, hate Mojo Riley's finish. It is just awful. The 
Diva's move, the rear view, followed up by the earthquake sit down. If you're not a 300 pound monster, don't do that move. Go away, Mojo Riley, just go away. Okay. In the ring, we have Angelo Dawkins, who's dancing around. Also got a bandaged up arm. Don't know where he heard that, but oh well. And he's going to be facing Big Colin Cassidy. Um, who I think is really missing Enzo. These are a really good duo. I hope he gets over his injury. Or actually is still employed. Because he's not even been in a vignette for a while. So let's see what this guy's got. And we've got CJ Parker having a little wander around. Holding a sign. <laughs> And William Regal really does not like him. He's like, we'll be unprofessional, go over there and give him a good chinning. Um, it's pretty much a squash match for Big Kaz. Shame, again, I think they just start getting the NXT guys to actually have a bit deeper matches. A squash match here and there is good, but if that's all they're doing, they're never going to develop. And that's what the point of developmental is. But Big Kaz... If he really gets going, he could be a really good wrestler. He's got a good gimmick. And he's huge. He's seven foot. He's skinnier than what they would like, but it does mean he carries less weight, so it helps him avoid some injuries. And he's very agile. He's got some good leaps and hits with the size he is. So I would like to see some more out of him. Okay, we get a backstage segment with JBL and Bo Dallas. Um, <coughs> sorry, a bit of a cold thing going on. Uh, JBL actually does seem to know the NXT talent now. Uh, <laughs> Bo Dallas comes up with a bunch of letters from his Bo Leavers, demanding that he gets a title shot. And if he doesn't, these letters are going to flood into JBL's office and he won't be able to deal with it. And JBL's like, well, let's give these to CJ Parker to uh, recycle, save the world. And it's like, well, we'll have a gamble. If you beat your next opponent, you can get a title match. If you lose, you leave NXT for good. Um, bit of an odd one, that. Because surely leaving NXT for good means he is just ascending to the main roster. And what does that mean? Unlike most other NXT people, he can't come back and have a little appearances. So, yeah, this is a bit pointless. I don't think they really needed to put that in there. We should have made it a more simple step, like if he doesn't beat Big E then he's not allowed a title shot for a year, that kind of thing. Not sort of you leave NXT and then graduate to Raw. God, what a punishment that is. Ho, ho, ho. But no, Bo Dallas is good with his like creepy ass style. And JBL actually seems to know the NXT stars now and actually pays attention to the product. So he's actually doing a bit better of a job as a commissioner. Now we're going to get our main event. Three Canadians, Tyson Kidd, Tyler Breeze, and Sami Zayn. I cannot wait for this match. It should be nice and mental. <laughs> Sami Zayn was going for an exploder suplex on Tyler Breeze, but Tyson runs in and German Sami, while he does the exploder suplex, mental. Oh, and Zayn hits a brutal exploder suplex into the turnbuckle. Tyler Bleed landing on his head, but still manages to kick out. Ah, oh. Tyler Breeze manages to knock Tyson Kidd off the top, crotches himself on the top rope. While he turns around in the corner, Sami Zayn hits the boot to the face. Tyson Kidd then pushes Sami Zayn over the top rope, because his leg's still over the top. And then hits the elbow for the win. So we're going to have Tyson Kidd versus Adrian Neville. I won't lie, I thought it was going to be one of the other two to actually win this. So, Tyson Kidd versus Adrian Neville at NXT TakeOver. This should be an interesting match, but... Two hard workers going at it, but I thought with Tyler Breeze should have the heel-face relationship and just Sami Zayn against amazing wrestler. And actually knows um, Adrian Neville very well. They can have some 
that I've seen them live have some phenomenal matches. So, well done Tyson Kidd, and we'll see what we get at NXT TakeOver, if we please get it in England, just give me the goddamn network, or just show it on TV while you're still sorting that out. Until next time, DTFN.